Input measures are very commonly used and can be helpful in explaining what goes into providing library services. Anne Arundel County Public Library has 272 full-time equivalents employed at the 15 library branches and headquarters. Patrons have access to 302 public computers, over 900,000 books, and over 200,000 CDs, DVDs, and audiobooks. The Burlington Public Library employs four full-time and seven part-time staff in serving the community through our single branch. We provide public access to 24 personal computers, gathering space in the form of three meeting rooms, and access to 50,000 books, CDs, and DVDs. Output measures are among the most common measures used. They describe production, the number of things produced with the inputs. In fiscal year 2010, Anne Arundel County Public Library had over 300,000 active borrowers and 2.8 million patron visits. These patron visits resulted in a circulation of 5.1 million, 5,000 organization meetings held in our meeting rooms, and almost 50,000 attendees for the 1,000 programs the library offered. Additionally, the library hosted almost 800,000 public access computer users and 400,000 licensed database sessions. These contributed to a total of 168 million views of the library web pages. In fiscal year 2010, Burlington Public Library estimated 220,000 patron visits and a total circulation of 185,000. Total cardholders were approximately 13,000, including the 2,000 we added this year. We logged 30,000 computer logins, 38,000 database sessions, and 83,000 website visits. Our 25 summer reading events attracted just shy of 600 participants, and our storytime attendees totaled almost 1,800. Our staff handled 27,000 questions, and our public meeting room space attracted 26,000 attendees. The output data you've just seen are commonly collected and reported by libraries. But what do all the numbers mean? Here, Skip Ald infuses meaning into the numbers during an informal work session. The people who use our libraries, it really is the entire community. We have, we have as I said, 207,000 people last month alone. And this includes stay-at-home moms, businessmen, businesswomen, it includes students of all ages, from kindergarten through, really through college, and frankly, we are a lifelong learning agency, so we serve learners really of all ages. We serve homeschoolers, they use the libraries tremendously. We serve the affluent parts of this, of this county, as well as homeless people. We serve every income bracket in between. We, we serve the young, the old, 20-somethings, senior citizens, really it's, it's everyone, white, black, Asian, Hispanic. So you need to kind of keep that in mind as you're thinking about what the libraries do for this community. The generalities used in the preceding clips supplement the hard numbers and are intended to humanize the data. What are the critical input and output data for your library system? Do you have the numbers? What do the numbers reveal? How can you make them real to decision makers? Understanding cost data and other inputs is essential to managing a library system. Outputs describe the library's production. The larger question, however, is what difference does the library make in the community? Outcome measures are the gold standard for public agencies. They describe the impact of public expenditures in the community and in the lives of the individual. Outcome measures are hard to develop and challenging to compile. Efficiency and effectiveness measures are often used as proxies for outcome measures. These types of statistics tell us how well resources are being used and whether missions are being accomplished. Many public agencies effectively use individual testimonials to tell compelling stories of how the library benefited them, then illustrate those stories with data. As compelling as a story may be, the data are important to enable the listener to accurately generalize a story to the larger population.
The U.S. Impact Survey was developed as a tool to help libraries collect outcome and impact data on public access technology. I'm Samantha Becker. I'm the research project manager for the U.S. Impact Study at the University of Washington Information School. We've designed the U.S. Impact Survey as your tool, as a library community's tool for helping make the case that public access technology is valuable to the communities that you work in. And we hope that we've designed a tool that's useful for you, um, that you can use year after year in your efforts to maintain your funding and develop new partnerships and do advocacy for the library. When we talk to policymakers during the U.S. Impact Study, Sometimes what we first heard was, oh, library patrons, they're just doing email or Facebook or watching YouTube videos. And once we started talking to them about, no, actually, they're doing those things but they're doing a whole lot more and they are doing purposeful things and they're doing directed activities and they're doing those things in a way that's different than people who have internet access at home do. These are people that have an hour, maybe two hours on an internet connected computer in a library a day and have to take care of all of the types of things that happen online now that we all take for granted when we have internet access access at home. So they go in there, they know what they need to get done. They are focused on the types of tasks, these instrumental tasks that lead to outcomes that they need to do. Anna Rundle and Burlington were both pilot libraries for the U.S. Impact Survey. From the survey results, it's clear that patrons are using the library's computers and Wi-Fi for a variety of reasons. Rather than just reporting how many computers are available or the number of sessions used by the public, the data tells us why the public is using the library computers and, consequently, why computers matter. Of the patrons surveyed in the U.S. Impact Survey, 27% of patrons used the computers for employment to undertake job searches, skill-based training, and professional research. 32% used the computers for education, mostly for homework and to prepare for standardized tests. 31% use them for e-government, to complete government forms, learn about government programs and services, and learn about laws and regulations. 35% use them for civic engagement, to keep up with current events and learn about political and social activities. And 35% for health, to learn about illness and diseases. Through the survey, we found that patrons are using the library's computers for various reasons. 10% for e-business, business planning, finding new clients, and contracting opportunities. 32% for education, mostly for homework and online courses. 33% for e-government, to complete government forms, learn about government programs and services, and learn about laws and regulations. 41% for employment, mostly to look for a job or to research opportunities. 41% for health, to learn about illness and disease. And 43% for civic engagement, to keep up with current events and learn about political and social activities. With data on what patrons are doing, libraries have the opportunity to add more value to their communities by providing services that further address the needs of their patrons. This demonstrates to decision makers that libraries actually use their data to better serve the community. Anne Arundel County Public Library did this by focusing on employment issues. The reason why over 550 of the patrons surveyed through the U.S. Impact Survey were using public access computers. We have a very strong partnership with the Anne Arundel County Workforce Development Corporation. They have job specialists, job search specialists who actually are now placed in our libraries to work certain hours each week. We know that we've worked with thousands of people through our partnership with Workforce Development. And we know anecdotally through the U.S. Impact Survey, at least 44 people have actually gotten employment because of our services. We would now like to expand that, to be able to keep track of these people and find out, you know, in concrete numbers, how many we're helping. In an informal budget work session, Skip Ald outlines the library's employment assistance efforts in the context of public access and illustrates the importance of this capability by telling a specific story about the role the library played when a new Target store opened. What we're trying to do with our libraries is to be responsive to the whole community. As a matter of fact, I've talked often about how we're much more than being in the library business, we are in the business of Anne Arundel County. 
So whatever is important to this community and whatever um, are the key needs of this community, we're here to help meet them. We have a lot of things, and I want to talk some about the, the uh, access to computers that we provide. We, we, our customers participated in a survey over this past year. It's called the U.S. Impact Survey, and we had a, quite a strong participation in that survey. Seventy percent of the people who use our libraries use it for either our computers or for Wi-Fi access, which we have available in all the libraries. Of those, of those people who use the libraries for the public access computers, 27 percent use it primarily to look for a job. And I know that you know how important that is. The library has a partnership and has won, a, won an award recently for the partnership we have with the Anne Arundel County Workforce Development Corporation. And, uh, the award was a national award, but it recognizes what libraries are doing all over the country. In our case, we have people from workforce development who come in as job search specialists in several of our libraries. They've also provided training for our staff. They've provided training for, uh, for the public on how to look for jobs. And let me just give you one story about that. When Target was opening up in the new Annapolis Town Center just a couple of years ago, we had more than a thousand people who just swamped the Annapolis Library to apply for jobs because the only way they could apply for a job was to apply online. Many of them had not used computers that much and certainly many of them had not used computers to apply online. So our library staff worked day in and day out for all those weeks that, that Target was uh, doing its hiring and all of that kind of thing. They were sending them to the library, as a matter of fact. So this kind of thing is, is very important. The Workforce Development Partnership has assisted more than 2,000 people in our libraries with job applications, uh, employment inter interviewing techniques, skills development, and that kind of thing. And uh, as a result of that, many of those people got jobs uh, you know, just as a direct result of the work that we're doing with workforce development. It's also important to reinforce the impact of the library's critical programs in one-on-one -on -one discussions. We had one person who had lost his job a year or two ago who had to move in with his mom. His mom was telling this story and, and uh, he had to learn new skills. He didn't really even know, know computer skills, so he came to the library, learned how to use a computer, then learned how to do job searching and all of that kind of thing. Now that you've reviewed key performance measurement terminology and have seen the U.S. Impact Survey data for Anne Arundel County and Burlington Public Libraries, take a moment to consider the following. What repertoire of stories do you and your staff have to illustrate the value of the services that you offer? Do you have a strategy in place for regularly collecting news stories? Are your stories backed by data to show that they're representative of the people you serve and not just isolated incidents? Outcome measures are the most effective way to explain the value of the library and its services to the community. Stories and testimonials from patrons supplement data and humanize the numbers. A library story and budget request are often more compelling to policymakers if they're framed around the community and residents as opposed to library programs and staff. The U.S. Impact Survey can help the library form its strategy. One component of the U.S. Impact Survey is patron satisfaction. The U.S. Impact Survey asks questions about overall patron satisfaction with library services and the importance of public access for patrons in the community. In this chapter, you'll see data from the U.S. Impact Survey and hear from patrons of the Anne Arundel County Public Library and Burlington Public Library. Another key outcome for our library is patron satisfaction. 86% of patrons surveyed reported being satisfied or very satisfied with our library and access they had to public computer services. Equally as important is the value our library provides to patrons by offering a free portal to the internet and related services. 56% of patrons reported that public computer resources are important or very important to themselves personally and 90% felt that these resources are important or very important to have available to others in the community. Of the public computer users surveyed, 92% of our patrons said they were either satisfied or very satisfied with the library and access to public computing services. 59% of our patrons reported public access is important to them personally, 
and 85% said that the public access provided by our library is important to the community as a whole. Three sets of data were quickly presented in the preceding clip. Let's consider each. The first is customer satisfaction. For both library systems, satisfaction is high. However, use caution when reporting these numbers if you're seeking to enhance services or to remedy deficiencies. If customer satisfaction is high, what is the business reason, in the current economic climate, for adding or preserving services? Your budget presentation should address the fact that your budget is designed to maintain a high level of customer satisfaction. It should also address why the preservation of services so highly valued by the community is important. An important challenge for library directors is demonstrating that public access and other programs offered by the library are critically important to the people who use them and beneficial to the community as a whole. In the case of library users, they can do a good job of telling the story for you. We have a wonderful staff here and we have a really great relationship with our customers. And we're, we see about 600 people a day through our door. So I know that we are meaningful to our community and we get great feedback from them about how important the library is to them. My son gets very excited whenever we say we're going to the library. <laughs> And for example, this morning he said, what are we going to do today after we wake up? And I said, we're going to the library. He kept coming in every couple minutes into my room when I was getting ready. Are we going to the library yet? We're going to the library now. I wanna go now. My son loves to read books. <laughs> and so we check out many different types of books here. We don't have cable, so I'm always looking at the different movies that they have available. Leapfrog videos and Thomas videos and the Leapfrog movies have really helped him learn letter recognition and the sounds. I'd go fishing. Where's he in the boat? He's in the boat. That's probably been key in him learning the alphabet at an early age. I love the librarians here. They're friendly, very knowledgeable about their computers and the books that they have here. They have an online homework help that they literally turn the website into a whiteboard and they can walk you through math problems or any other problems you have with like other subjects. I think that it's important to have internet access here for the public because many otherwise wouldn't have that opportunity. They can't afford it during these hard economic times. The free internet is good for anyone who doesn't have internet at their houses because they can come here and access anything that they would need to do that they couldn't do at home, like staying in touch with people. It's very important to have internet access because this is a computer world now. I use a computer a lot. Mine at home crashed, so I use the computer here a lot. Patron satisfaction is a key component for a library to fully understand its relevance and impact in the community. This enables a library to affirm that it's providing a quality service. The U.S. Impact Survey provides the hard data. Patron stories convey the impact. There are many ways for a library to tell its story. There's a lot of data available, but is it the right data? Each library system must determine what information it needs to collect and how best to present it. When you're thinking about outcomes that you want the library to provide, um, it is a, it's a good idea to engage your policymakers, partners in the communities, um, and especially your library staff about brainstorming what those outcomes that you want to achieve. And then also, when you're talking about your outputs, what kinds of programs and services you want to offer um, to achieve those outcomes, again, that's another opportunity to brainstorm with your library staff, with your volunteers, um, your city council members, um, the friends of the library or your library board, all of these people together to really put out there on the table all the different ways that libraries help patrons um, achieve their outcomes. I think what we've heard from librarians especially is that when it's all out there on paper it has a different feel to it. It's more real. Look at all these things that we do with so little. Most libraries do it with very little resources. And then also thinking and brainstorming through what else they could do if they were able, if they had more resources um, to be able to put towards them. In addition to talking with library staff and patrons, it's important to consult with decision makers themselves. What information do the leaders who make decisions about your library funds want from you? My job is to try to sift through all the desires, all the, the, the asks, if you will, 
and, and try to limit uh, the choices to those that are the most high priority. And the way I try to find those priorities, not only listening to the administrators, sometimes I'll listen to the librarians, I'll listen to the citizens. What are you looking for in your library system? And I try to work with closely with the county council in hopes that they will not cut the budget that I present. I see myself playing a facilitating role in which uh, more than anything, I ask questions of department heads and managers to try to pull out from them how their proposals do help the city meet or not meet its goals and objectives and how we will or won't uh, serve the public better. So I'm looking for a lean, mean budget, but yet I try to help where I think need, you know, help needs to be. I want to see some data, what are their needs, I guess I want to see how many people are coming through that library, who's using what. My job is to make sure that some of those needs are filled at certain times. I can't do it all the time, but I try as hard as I can. Past uh, budget targets do play an important role in determining future budgets. We look at uh, performance to determine the, the new budget goals. Um, it tells us how well have we performed in the past. Have we met our goals? Are we not meeting our goals? Bring in users and librarians. I want to talk to them as well as to the, the brass at the central headquarters. I want to get the perspective from all levels so I can make the, a, a decision based on all that kind of input. Many of us public managers just rush to data as the first uh, alternative and assume that if we just swamp a, a council with data it will by itself tell the story and without a narrative in connecting and evaluating that data and showing how it supports a story in how we're meeting our goals and objectives, it's just numbers on a page. Now that you're familiar with the data that administrators are looking for, the feedback that they value, and what they see as the role of libraries within their communities, take a moment to consider the following. What programs does your library offer? And what are the impacts of the outcomes generated by those programs? How do you know that the programs are important to your community? Do you have the data? Do you have the stories? Do you have a strategy in place for sharing both the data and stories with your key stakeholders and funders? Consult with decision makers so you can align the priorities of the city, county, or commission with the programs, services, and outcomes provided by the library. Choose your data thoughtfully and with a clear purpose in mind. Data needs to tell a story and support relevant objectives. Annually, most library directors have the challenge and opportunity to synthesize their data and stories in the presentation of their annual budget request. Presentations may be in formal work sessions or very formal public sessions. The tone and audience will vary from one locality to another, as will the style of the library director. While the building blocks are the same, presentations must be adapted. Here's a presentation to the Mayor and Council given by Maggie Buckholtz, Director of Burlington Public Library in Washington State. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Thank you for having me here. When I say library, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? We asked our users this question during National Library Week. And here in this Wordle before you, you'll see the answers. This is what comes to the mind of our community members when they think of the library. Words that are used more than once get a larger representation. I see the expected responses, things like books, literacy, and internet, and I clearly see that we are very connected with our community who regard us as friends. Libraries make communities what they are, and thanks to great foresight by this city, we have a library that is the cultural and community center of Burlington. In this presentation, I will discuss what the library does as Burlington's hub for information and ideas, our budget needs, and our goals for the future. Our core service is to be a portal to lifelong education. We accomplish this under three pillars of service, self-education, research assistance and instruction, and instructive and enlightening experiences. And here's what we are accomplishing in each of these three areas. The first pillar is creating a place for self-directed education. We offer 50,000 books, 
CDs and DVDs, and our goal is to add 2,500 new titles each year. This year we added ebooks and downloadable audio for the first time. 32% of our users surveyed in the University of Washington Impact Study have used our library computers and internet access for educational purposes. 56% of those were age 14 to 18. 13% performed research for a class. 12% completed coursework or homework. 10% searched for information on degree or certificate programs. 6 applied to a degree or certificate program, and 4 were accepted. 5 applied for financial aid, and 1 student received that financial aid. Our second pillar is providing research assistance and instruction. For example, we connect people to government resources. And according to our impact survey results, 33% of our surveyed users gained access to government resources through our public access computers. Half who access government forms submitted those forms online from our library stations. More than 25% who sought permit and license information applied from our stations and 20% who sought information on government programs and services applied for those services through the library. Through our public access computers, patrons can access information on a wide range of topics through our 34 online databases, from our academic search premiere to our tumble book library for preschool children. And our users come to us because of the training and support that the library staff offers to them while they're doing their research online. The third pillar is offering instructive and enlightening experiences. We accomplish this by offering programs for all ages, including classes, seminars, cultural and community events that create a foundation for lifelong education and unite us as human beings. This year alone, 580 children participated in our summer reading program. 1,800 children attended our story times, and we held 25 summer reading events. We also have 514 friends through Facebook. We're reaching an entire community of users who may not ever even walk through our doors. Across these three pillars, we offer a level of service that is not available anywhere else in our community, and we offer it to virtually anyone who walks through our doors. Our proposed budget is $501,000, most of which, $444,000, will go for personnel, our most important resource. This represents a change of a 13% reduction, or $73,000 decline from the prior year. The bulk of the reduction is in personnel expenses, budgeted to be less than last year by 14%, or about $70,000. This is primarily due to the proposed furloughs and the closures of the library during those furlough times. An important issue for taxpayers is whether or not they are getting good value for their investment in the library. Compared with peer libraries around the state, our staff are doing a better than average job. We have one of the smallest staff and provide more services than other libraries in Skagit County. We rank high in customers served per staff member. We rank very high in public use per capita. And we rank lower than average in expenditures per capita. We understand these difficult budget times. We've absorbed reduction, and we are working hard to do more with less. We will continue to explore alternatives to meet resource constraints. With the funding we get, we are committed to provide the best we can under the three pillars of self-directed education, research, and enlightening cultural experiences. We will continue to serve the 220,000 people who come through our doors annually. And we will continue to answer 10 questions per hour. That's a question every six minutes for every day that we're open. Secondly, we're committed to making the Burlington Library a safe place for all people to come. 
Staff presence is essential to building security. So we will continue with our roving reference model of service and have our staff out in the stacks interacting with our patrons. And we will continue to offer special programs to meet the community's needs, such as improving early literacy to ensure that all children are ready to learn when they begin school. This is a primary goal of the library based on our strategic plan that we conducted last year, and it aligns with the City Council's identical goal for the library. Most importantly, we will continue to strive to be seen by our community members as their friends. This is our value to the community, connecting with Burlington's residents, reducing isolation, providing resources for people to grow, all of these things together make our city stronger. Now that you've watched Maggie's budget presentation, take a moment to consider the following. Can you identify the different elements of Maggie's presentation? Did she effectively blend input data, output data, outcome data, patron stories, and Burlington Public Library's U.S. impact data in her budget request? How would you integrate your data into a full budget presentation? Are there indicators for which you collect data that were not used by Maggie, but that you would share in your presentation? What are they? Maggie used the theme of three pillars of service. What themes would you use? How would you keep your presentation relevant to your community and key stakeholders? There are many important things that libraries do for their communities. Making a compelling budget presentation is only the first step in telling any library's story. Supplemental activities must follow. These activities include meetings with civic associations and active marketing of the library to both the community and key stakeholders using fact sheets and informational newsletters. With the right data, stakeholders and funders will be able to independently tell the story of the library on its behalf. We hope that this video has helped you reflect on your budget presentations and how outcome data from the U.S. Impact Survey can be useful in demonstrating the value of your library to users and to the community. A compelling annual budget presentation before the city or county council is essential but not sufficient. Library leaders must constantly tell their stories, creating opportunities wherever and whenever they can. Take a version of the budget presentation to civic associations and service clubs. Prepare fact sheets for staff, members of the library board, council members, and friends. Condense your budget presentation into a one-minute elevator or parking lot speech that can be presented anywhere and anytime someone asks about the library. Use your impact data as part of a continuous information campaign. If we tell the story of the library effectively and give funders the information they need, they'll be able to tell your story for you. Libraries and librarians in this day and age are brokers of information. We've just had a very innovative uh, project in our library system where we've installed computers uh, to help with workforce training and the identification of job availability. I think we won an international award actually for being able to do that. So the libraries increasingly play a critical role in job creation. And I think libraries are well positioned, positioned better than most other departments in a city to demonstrate that they can meet the needs of the community to engage technology and information. One of the, the most important amenities that people are looking for is the library system. Over the past few years, libraries and all public services have weathered tough economic times. In a poor economy, libraries become first responders to people in need. There's people out of work that are in tears in your office, and they say, you're our only hope, you're our last hope. We have people um, at closing sometimes who have no place to go. We're the warm place for them to be, and it's cold outside. Or teens who are in a really, really tough home situation, and we're trying to connect them up with resources so that they will be safe. It's critical that libraries invest the time and energy into collecting the data and stories that not only tell the library's story, but the story of the people they serve. This video was brought to you by the U.S. Impact Survey, your public access evaluation tool, online at impactsurvey.org. 
The U.S. Impact Survey was developed by the University of Washington Information School, envisioning a world where more effective use of information helps everyone discover, learn, innovate, solve problems, have fun, and make a better world. Information changes lives. To learn more about public access technology, visit tasha.uw.edu. That's T-A-S-C-H-A dot U-W dot E-D-U. Funding was provided by the U.S. Libraries Program of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, working to narrow the digital divide in the United States and many developing countries around the world. The production was written and directed by ICMA, the International City-County Management Association, supporting professional local government management to build sustainable communities that improve lives worldwide. We are grateful to our partner libraries and their communities for contributions toward this project. Anne Arundel County Public Library, the essential connection to learning and enrichment, and Burlington Public Library, Burlington's hub for information and ideas. Video production was provided by Bitter Jester Creative, telling stories and communicating ideas through visual media since 2001.